Hey dudes, it's P-Dubs. Thanks as always for hanging out upstairs with us and for checking out the channel. And on today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Arcade 1-Up Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition Big Blue Arcade Cabinet. This cabinet's been out for a while. You've probably seen a bunch of reviews for it already, but I've only had it up and running for a little over a month, so I wanted to let you know my thoughts. First off, from an appearance point of view, their goal was to replicate the original Big Blue Cabinet. And although they had to take some liberties where they could, Overall, they did a decent job, although this thing still looks like a giant ice scraper to me. Also, I'm 5'11", and with that slanted control deck, unfortunately my hands hurt after extended periods of play. So unfortunately, I find myself not liking the slanted control deck. I have to sit in a stool in order to play comfortably for an extended period of time. Also, what's up with that logo being off-centered on the side panel? Taking a look at the marquee, this is interesting. Instead of the typical arcade one-up light box marquee, they went ahead and they have this translucent artwork with an LED strip behind it that you put on as you assemble the cabinet. Although it lights up, it doesn't light up as good, which we'll show you later in the video. The speakers here, they put on the front of the cabinet, and if you ask me, they could have put some kind of grills or something on top of this to make it look better. It honestly looks pretty lazy. Arcade 1-Up control decks, as you know, they're pretty standard. This is the pretty standard Street Fighter 2 design we've seen on original arcades as well as on Arcade 1-Up recreation arcades with the addition of the live button, on-off, volume toggle switch. You do get a headphone jack, which is nice. And you'll notice I've already had to switch out the controls. On the right-hand side here at the time of shooting this video, we have our original Arcade 1-Up controls original arcade one-up joystick and for a casual player you're probably going to be okay with them although let's be honest they're not that great on the left hand side i've already swapped these out with some half style buttons as well as a new a real sanwa joystick you could hear the differences overall it's improved my gameplay experience although a lot of folks will tell you if you're going to get really competitive on this thing you might want to go with those coveted il sticks would probably end up switching those in the future, but these new sticks for right now are doing the job. Taking a look, I always love the Arcade 1-Up bezel on the Street Fighter 2 cabinets. I absolutely love the artwork. I think it looks great. Now here's the marquee. What's interesting is if you're in a dark room and if this is the only thing lit, you can see it as you can see right here. Don't have very many things turned on, but if you have an arcade with plenty of things lit up, and stuff it's going to kind of bland this out it's kind of interesting how arcade one up used to give us washed out marquees which they still do on their cabinets this is the only cabinet with this style marquee so far from arcade one up but on this particular one it's not washed out it's almost like it's too dim if the lights are on in the room and or if you're in a arcade that's well lit again you're probably not going to see it but i do have a fix for this i'll show you later in the video now, what is nice about this Multicade, and yes, I will call it a Multicade, we've even covered it on our Multicade Mondays broadcast, is that this does include 12 games. So if you have 12 games, you're a Multicade in my opinion. You got multiple Street Fighter games, Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. You got three great Darkstalkers games, which unfortunately, as you can tell from the leaderboards on the win-loss records, not a lot of people play. I'm actually really digging getting to learn how to play those games. As well as you have Knights of the Round, Echo Fighters, Capcom Sports Clubs, Muscle Bomber. So you have a couple of wrestling games, some sports games, as well as a side-scrolling beat-em-up game, Knights of the Round. So you have plenty of games to choose from to kind of give yourself a variety. This cabinet retails for $600. It's been on sale for $500 in certain areas. So if you can get it for $500 or less, you're getting plenty of games to choose from. And let's kind of dive into some of that. One thing that Arcade 1UP usually does very well is their user interfaces on all their platforms. They're easy to navigate, easy to follow, get your games up and running. Sometimes less is more when it comes to home arcade machines. You can easily navigate down to the settings, connect to the internet, uh, reset, restore the, and default your machine, uh, turn menu music on or off, check for firmware updates because this is a Wi-Fi internet connected machine. On the bottom left, if you press the player two start button on any game from the main menu, you can alter dip switch settings for all the games. So that's pretty cool as well for those who want to practice before they take it to the next level. And of course, if you navigate up to the top left, your main icon, which I just did, you can also adjust your individual online avatar. So you can change your online uh, gamer tag name. You can change the picture associated with it and things like that. So these are some pretty cool options when it comes to the online. When it comes to their online 
gaming, there are definitely opportunities for improvement to make this whole lobby system better. Having the ability to add friends, block friends, block players, etc. A lot of those features are missing on this particular unit. But they do have some of the core basics that you need to get up and running and have an enjoyable online experience playing with other owners. Now, if you don't want to play online against other owners of this arcade cabinet, you just simply click on local gameplay, which is really nice. You're not forced to play online, which is really cool. There's some people out there who just don't care about online stuff. And of course, you get the typical menu screen before you launch any game. Love it when those arcade companies do that, show you how to use all the controls for that particular game. And when it comes to the emulation, minus a few quirks here and there, like a little black box on the Street Fighter 2 Turbo loading screen and stuff, minus a few minor, minor details, when it comes to the overall emulation and sound, everything is running really well on these cabinets on all 12 games, no complaints. And if you wanted to hop online, I think that's kind of where the magic of this cabinet will kind of uh, settle in for owners of this particular product. I think personally, you probably would want to be a really big fan of online play to pick up the big blue. If not, there's plenty of Street Fighter 2, Capcom Legacy cabinets from Arcade 1-Ups and others that you can pick up that just, uh, whatchamacallit, don't have online play and you don't need to worry about that stuff. It's definitely fun to learn. I've had the cabinet for a little bit. As you can see, I've been getting my butt kicked, but learning so much along the way. Finally hit level two, got myself 12 wins to go with 50 losses as of the timing of this video. And obviously when you hop in, there's the lobbies. You can password protect a game if you wanted to create a game and just play with a buddy and give him the password. Or you could join random games like this guy sitting here in the lobby. I'm going to go ahead and hop in here and take him on. Now, this guy is a far bigger level than me, so he's going to kick my butt. But let's give you an example of the online play, and you'll see that it works really, really well. It uh, The emulation, as well as any kind of glitching or lag, things like that are minimal, provided everyone is having a good internet connection at the time. Overall, very happy with uh, Arcade 1-Up's use of the peer-to-peer -peer networking here. As you can see, that guy smoked me in the first round, but I'm going to beat him in round two. Let's check it out. And it goes to show you that you learn a lot when you're playing against other people. You can kind of figure out good fighting strategies and stuff. I have a long way to go myself personally. So he won one, I won one, and then of course he's going to absolutely crush me in this one. But you never know. Don't be afraid to fight somebody of a higher level. You never know. You might squeak out those two round victories and get yourself an overall match win. Don't be afraid to compete and play against other people in the lobby. It's actually the best way that you'll get better at these games. Kudos to this guy for beating me, congratulations. Now, before we dive into that marquee fix, let's talk a little bit more about some of the other games included. The Darkstalkers games, there's three of them, these fighters. These games are a lot of fun. I'm actually really digging them. I, I'm kind of surprised that the lobbies really aren't uh, adopting to these. If you, it seems like mostly everyone just wants to play the Street Fighter games. I think they're fun games to play when you want to take a break from Street Fighter. The wrestling games are fun too. There's two of them on here. And uh, I'll have all the games lists and everything in the video description below. And of course, you got to learn how to block if you want to master Knights of the Round, as you just saw there. Definitely love Knights of the Round. You even get this side scrolling shooter game, which is kind of fun as well. Everyone likes these. This one's kind of weird because you have to, you know, swing that, uh, your weapon around your ship. You, you guys will know when you play it. It's kind of weird, but it works. Another wrestling game. 
Really digging the wrestling games on here. They're a lot of fun. Need to figure out how to play them and get good at them, but overall, they're a fun experience. And then, of course, we have all the different Capcom sports games. Uh, there's three of them. There's tennis, there's basketball, and there's soccer. And these games are super adorable, fun sprites, fun animations, and a ton of fun to play as well. And all of these games you can play online with or against friends, which is really, really cool. But let's talk real quick about that marquee fix before we get to our final thoughts. So I want the marquee to be just a bit brighter, but I want to also avoid having it washed out. So obviously we're going to have to add another LED strip here from Retro 530. I'll have a link in the video description below where you can get this kit. Simply open the back of the cabinet and you see that ledge that the speaker panel is screwed into, but we want to go ahead and mount an LED strip on that panel pointed up in order to get some additional light in the back of the marquee to kind of make it a little bit better. Here's that light strip from Retro 530, has that sticky on the bottom of it that we're going to mount on that panel, and Retro 530 does include this additional Y splitter, which we'll use to power everything up. Literally will take you seconds to plug all this in. Just reach up in there and go ahead and mount that uh, LED strip facing up on that panel that I showed you a few seconds ago, and then with that cord hanging down, start connecting your Y splitter and split the power back to the uh, normal light strip, the LED strip that came with the device. This is a totally optional mod, up to you. I like it because if I have a lot of machines turned on, plus the LED lights in my arcade, I'll still be able to see this light up marquee because it's very dim in an arcade unless it's like the only machine that's turned on. So this gives that marquee just that extra boost that it's needed to really make this stand out a little bit more. As you can see with the picture in picture, uh, the smaller image is what that marquee originally looked like before we added that additional light strip from Retro 530. Overall, when I think of the arcade one up big blue cabinet, I have to say to myself, I think this cabinet is actually probably a solid C plus from arcade one up. It still looks like a giant ice scraper. The slanted control deck does hurt people's hands, especially if you're my height, five foot 11. Had to add screw hole covers to keep all those exposed screws from showing. It looked like a drive-by shooting. The speakers on this thing are awful. The controls are not good if you wanted to play the games competitively online. The marquee is kind of a cool uh, concept, but it wasn't well lit enough and, you know, have to mod that to make it better. The speakers here, the front speaker panels are very lazy. From an appearance point of view, it just seems like they kind of mailed it in on this one. But from a fun factor point of view, the games themselves, the emulation, the online experience, although they need to make simply send out some firmware updates and add some features and things to that lobby system to make it a better experience overall for owners, minus some changes that they could easily push out via Wi-Fi or firmware updates. I think that uh, overall the online experience is tons of fun. The retro fighting game community guys, they're a lot of fun to hang out with and talk to and, and play games and learn from, and that's all really cool in my book. From a design point of view, this is definitely not the best cabinet that Arcade 1UP has come up with since they started releasing cabinets a few years ago. Definitely solid C plus on the overall presentation. But if you take away the appearance of the cabinet, if you look at the actual playability and replay factor of the cabinet, there's a lot of fun to be had here with 12 really good Capcom games to choose from of different varieties, as well as a growing and exciting online retro fighting game community. I think if you have $500 or less to spend and can find this thing on sale because the retail price is $600, I don't think it's worth $600, but if you can get it for $500 or less and join in on the fun, by all means do it and we'll see you in the lobbies. Let me know what you guys think. Give me your honest opinions and reactions below. As always, do me a favor. If you enjoyed the review, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And as always, my dudes, thank you for subscribing.